Hello guys, today we're gonna create a bunch of features. It's the map capture tool that helps us to capture the autographic projection of our map and we can use it as the texture for our map or as a canvas so we can export it to Photoshop and because of the precision that the capture is made, we can just draw over it the map we want and use it in our game. Also, we're gonna create the world map and mini map and some common markers that can be used, such as points of interest, widgets. So, as you can see from the screen, here is the flow and the explanation how these features will actually work. The first step is to place the map tool to our scene. It's the common actor which has the scene capture component. The logic behind it is pretty simple. We need to click on the checkbox so the capture will be created and saved to our project. Then we spawn a player when we actually start to play and our player spawns the map actor. Then this map actor actually is attached to our player. The map actor has two scene capture components. One for minimap and one for the world map. Each renders show only components when the particular scene capture is used. So it's very cheap. Also, our markers in the world are actually the planes with the materials that are placed under our ground with their specific sizes and high values. Minimap markers inherit player's rotation and our map actually in our minimap widget will rotate. That makes us that makes our player marker static. In the world map it's the opposite behavior, so world map is static, but our marker of our player is actually rotating. Each marker is the separate actor that can be used in the rendering. So we place it in our world. When the game launches, it sends its location to our UMG widget for our mini or world map. UMG measures the difference between our character and the location we sent or we have received and then if the difference is higher so it means that the object is not in our direct view on our minimap so it's aligned to the edge of our minimap and as you can see or as you saw from the preview in the beginning of this video it actually works pretty much well, it's not very complex in the implementation. As you can see from the picture here, it's the flow, so basically you know what will be computing or just how it will work, so there is no complex math and some calculations. It's very uncommon way to create this kind of map and world map, but I, the way I found it myself is pretty much good way to start prototyping or you can even go with this 
in the production. It depends on the quality and the complex way you need to have your mini map and world map also. So let's get started with our blueprints. First of all, let's start with the materials for the layout of our map and mini map. Also, with the materials for that will handle our marker and our map projection. As you can see here, I have three types of materials. Common marker, map, map projection. Let's start with the smaller. Comma marker, material domain user interface. Next, it's the texture. Actually, as you can see, it's the parameter value. So we can set the texture through the blueprint with material instance dynamic created. Make sure that parameter name here is the texture, or you can go with the one you like most, but in this tutorial I'll use just the texture. RBG is for final color and alpha for the opacity, so our planes won't be opaque and we will see only our texture on it. Next, map projection. As you can see, they are actually the same. User domain, it's, I'm sorry, material domain is user interface, but the blend mode is opaque because our map is solid texture, so we don't need any opacity. Next, our map. Here you can see that actually I have the static switch parameter. That's because if you take a look, I have two material instances that are inherited from our master material. And by switching the minimap static switch parameter, I can have two different layouts with their own attributes. And each material instance is used for each element in our widget. Now let's take a look how it's created. First of all, our mini map. It's just two radial gradient exponential functions. We subtract the smaller from the bigger one. Here I can here I have the minimap contour, it's the parameter, so I can adjust the width of the edge. I have this one. It's for the art purposes. Next, the minimum contour color, so I can adjust the color and the opacity. Now it's all multiplies and we have texture. Actually, this attribute will inherit the capture from our map tool that we create soon. So when we capture our scene, then when the game launches, through the blueprint we set this texture, so the black area here will display our map. And as you can see, I just add the result here to our texture, so this edge will cover small parts of our 
world's or minimap and by adjusting the alpha channel we can have pretty much in my opinion pretty layout also here it's the switch parameter if the value is true as you can see from our minimap here we have the layout for our minimap and here if we have the false we have the layout for our world map as we talk about the world map is the same kind of logic for creating the edge but here we have generate round rectangles as you can see box dimension is set to 0 0.9 we need this not the one one for box dimensions because the way this material function works actually if we have zero if we have one and one there, there is no way to create this round also as you can see I have the corner radius for the big one and this kind of operation for the smaller rectangle the division size it's up to you to decide but the less it's the lower the value is the more precise these corners from the big one and the small one rectangles will be also this attribute big map contour actually as you can see measures the width of the edge we have so and it, this all is for just art purposes it's not necessary but I'd like to have this and as you can see the logic is the same now material domain is user interface the blend mode is translucent because if we have a pack I will actually see some pixels but I need some sub pixels with different values for the white so I have more smoother with no artifacts look and as for the opacity it also has the static switch parameter is the same and just to have my blue print here not blue print but actually it's also the blue print so in case I want this one to look this way so I can read through it and it's look and it looks beautiful I just copy paste these attributes from here just to prevent using these wires through all these blueprints the same for the rectangle for the bigger rectangle our opacity masks should be our higher elements our not higher but our biggest elements so we can capture everything so take a look one more time now we need to create two material instances 
material instance mini map, material instance big map, or world map. And in our mini map, we need to switch on the mini map checkbox. In our big map, we just can leave it as a default state. And don't look at this attribute here. This texture is just the placeholder. Actually, when the game starts, we will set up these textures, these texture attributes from our blueprint. And just as you like. And let's continue. Now, actually, let's start with creation of the structure. As you can see, I have Texture 2D, Vector 2D, and Float for each attribute. The first is the texture, actually. It's the icon we will use for our widgets in the mini and world maps. The size, we actually will define in pixels. So, they will be the same for our mini and world map and the offset offset it's that fake that's order that we will actually need to set so our attributes not attributes our icons our markers and so on will be properly ordered and they will stack in the proper way. Now, after we create our structure, we need to create a database here. As you can see, I have five types of markers. One for our player and four just to show you that the feature actually works. Also make sure that the offset that you will add is actually the negative value and I use minus 1500 thousand value as the absolute minimum because it's the value actually the radius of I think the radius of our default Unreal Engine Sky Sphere in units the negative value needs so that we won't see it this needs to be under our ground and the higher the value is it means minus one is actually higher than minus two so our player as you can see has minus 100,000 units I use the units and it means that this marker will be on the top of any other markers. So, type A, for instance, will be lower than type B, type B lower than type C, and type C lower than type D. And type B will be lower our player. So, in this way, by adding another rows with the predefined attributes, you can have a big amounts of different kinds of markers displayed on our mini or our world map. Now, let's create two widgets. The first one is HUD map. 
as you can see I have two types of images with their own anchors make sure that these values will be the same for our next widget it's map marker but actually this widget will store the position of our markers on the edge of our minimap so when we don't see it directly on our minimap the icon should be added to the edge as you saw it from the preview the logic is pretty much simple each marker will create the proper widget this one here you can see I have the grid which has only one element the image and as you can see it's vertical aligned to the top so we don't need to bother about the pixel alignment or the position we need to adjust it will always be the same but it's independent from the size the behavior where it will appear we actually define in our graph let me see where I have it not this, not this here, but we will come back here later just make sure that this element, these attributes of this element are the same as we have for our minimap in our hard map widget. So, as I said, the logic is pretty much simple. Each widget adds these kinds of each marker adds this kind of widget. This widget is a is overlaying our minimap, and because the sizes are the same, we can just rotate it in both directions smoothly around our edge. Now I'll show you the layout I have. The anchor is top left corner. Alignment specific so that I can have The proper behavior when I have different DPI scalings, so it will always be on the same position. Let me see. Well, I don't have anything here. Don't take a look at this because I don't have the direct binding here. It's just from the event reconstruct logic I have here. And make sure that our map marker element has the same values here. Also, it has the child, our image. Make sure that you have this kind of setup. Horizontal alignment centered, vertical alignment top. And that's all right now for these elements let's take a look at our big map or world map it's center anchor 
actually there is no well there is a difference because this feature is pretty much complex some L uh, some my decisions I forgot about them but I'll remember when I explain it to you so when we start our game our world map should actually be hidden because it will appear only when we need to show it but our minimap should be always visible so make sure that behavior of the minimap visibility is set to visible our world map by default is set to hidden as for hard marker as you can see our grid is just the border but the alpha value for the color and opacity is set to zero so it's transparent make sure to have the same now let's create three blueprint actors blueprint map capture blueprint map and blueprint common marker as you can see under blueprints in the folder common I have one more folder that is called map and that's the blueprint that I was talking about as you can see the parent class for all of them is actor actually common marker is the element we place in our world it's the representation of the point of interest for instance our map is the actor that will spawn through the player character blueprint logic then it will be attached to it and map capture is entity that we should add in all our levels so as you can see from the preview it has actually the camera so we can see what we will have in our capture and this handles the texture of the image that we will use for our world and mini maps now when we are done with creating the basic elements let's talk about the first customizations and we will talk about the variables for each entity we have here so you need to create so we can start to walk so let's begin with the hard map widget make sure that our images here are set to be variable now let's go to the graph and as you can see we need to create material instance dynamic which will store the material instance for our mini map and our big map or world map it's the material that we created earlier this one and this one so material instance dynamic big map material instance dynamic mini map the default values are actually none because we will add them to our logic here so just create two 
empty material instance dynamic variables. Next, texture render target 2D. Also make sure it's instance editable and has expose and spawn checkbox selected. It's the render target for the world map and the second, the same texture render target 2D, but for our minimap. Also, it has no default values because you don't create them and save on our disk, in our project. We create them as virtual textures. Now, this type of variable is the array of HUD map markers. It's the array of these elements. So, now let's talk about functions. We need to function here. It's update map. Make sure for the input we have the minimap and the value is boolean. I'll explain everything, every function when we start to work with them. Right now we are creating the basic stub and create create map marker function. It's the function that will create this widget for our edge representation for the representation of our markers on the edges of our minimap. And for the input we can see that we have mar marker data, it's data table raw handle, location vector and minimap size in units. Now that's all for this widget. Let's go to the hub map marker. Make sure that the grid and the marker are both set as variables. And here, let's start with the marker data. It's data table or handle. Instance editable, expose and spawn. Then marker structure. Variable type is our structure that we created. F common marker, this one, no attributes here because the way we get it, it just we unpack our data table and save the value to the local test version. Next, location. Instance editable, expose and spawn, vector type. The same for minimap size in units, but variable type is float. B minimap boolean type is the local version we need. Here, to have the proper behavior, to show or hide our edge elements when we switch between world and minimap and update rotation timer. It's the timer handle because we don't do anything on tick. Not anything but most of our logic won't use tick because even the value of update 0.04 is better than every frame. Now, the functions. 
The first one is update visibility. So no inputs or outputs, just the call. Date position, the same. These functions are internal, so we won't use them from the different blueprints. They are just here to keep our graph clean. All the logic will store here. So, date rotation, also our local function. This visibility, this rotation, this position. Yes. Now, I forgot to tell you that make sure our minimap boolean here has the replication notify, wrap notify. So when we change our value here from update status function here, this will trigger the proper behavior. So when we need to start updating our timer or if the false, we need to clear and stop the ticking logic. So make sure rep notify minimap boolean. And when you set the replication to rep notify, you automatically have this type of function on rep and the name of the variable we change. Also, date map status. As for the input, it's minimap and type is boolean. So, that's all for this widget. Now, let's talk about our newly created blueprints here. And let's start with bp underscore map capture, our tool that we need to add for each of our level. So we can have different textures for all our scenes and this will be used for our scene capture render target to have the proper way of the world and minimap work. So, the variables, world size in units, float, world size in kilometers, float, default value is 1, but it depends on the size actually of your current world. If you take a look at your landscape, or not landscape, if you use a static mesh, but landscape is the better way to use, you can see that the resolution I have is 500 by 500. It means that in units it will, and the scale is 100, so actual size is 1500 by 15, not 15, 50, 100, 50,000, 50,000 by 50,000 units. So, in my case, and because this well, is editable. You can see that the proper wall size in kilometers is set 0 0.5. So if I have the map one kilometer by one kilometer, I need to set it to one. If it's two, I need to set it by two. And as you can see, it's actually right now. Uh, well, uh, 
the behavior is that by adjusting the size of our map capture tool, we are setting our camera closer or I forgot the word, not closer. We actually change the height of our camera. So let's continue. Capture size, integer. Actually, this is the size of the texture we need to set to capture our to have the capture of our ground. So changing this value will increase or decrease the quality of the picture we will have. Texture name is string, also editable because as you can see I have the sandbox, it means that when I press the next attribute capture, the capture we will have will automatically have the proper format and the proper name. So changing this attribute to something else will actually create the new texture here. Next, B capture is the attribute, so switching it, we will actually make our photo. Next, material instance dynamic, no default value, because we do this through our logic here, and it's for our map projection. If you remember, it's this kind of material. Here we will set the capture we create by our tool, so it will be applied to the plane we will put under our ground to have the proper way for worlds and minimap work. Next, map texture. Variable type is texture. Or it can be let me see. Maybe I can have the text two D. Yes, not texture, but texture to the Let me check what I have here. Yes, texture to the Let me just see how it works. Yes. And check player time. It's timer handler because the flow, the editor and the game works are actually not the same. For instance, if you package your game, you can have the situation when some elements are created earlier, for instance, than our player character, and some logic won't actually work. So, on the event begin play of the elements that are actually placed in the world, we need to check whether we have our character spawned. So, I'll talk about this logic later, let's continue. And, for the function, just map capture. 
It's the internal function. Now let's move to our VP map. Also, I forgot. Let me see one more time. We talk about our widgets, elements here and here. Yes. Let's go back to map capture and make default setup. Scene capture component rotation minus 90. Location 150,000 units. So it's actually on the edge of our sky sphere if you have it. So changing th this need to prevent the elements that are set. For instance, if you have the skyscraper and the high of it is 18,000 and your scene capture component is lower than it, you just won't have it captured to our photo. So make sure that this value is the highest point you have. The projection type is orthographic. Next, primitive render mode, use show only list, capture every frame and capture on movement are unchecked. For the flex, you can leave it because we use show only list, but in some cases maybe you won't use it. So you can see that's what I have before I use the show only list. Also make sure that you have on the game here turned off, I mean turned on, you don't need any light and post process. So the representation of our world and minimap won't have any effects from our post process and lighting, so day or night, bad or good weather, our minimap and world map will, will always look the same as in the texture. Next, camera component minus 90. Everything is by default. And projection plane. Our projection plane is under our ground and the value is minus 15,000, 1500,000. Rotation on that axis is 90. So, as you saw from the preview, when we start our right vector, I mean our forward vector of our player, our camera and our scene capture attribute, scene capture elements, are on the same direction and our style and for the shape it's the basic shape of the engine it's plain with the dimensions of 100 by 100 or 1 meter by 1 meter also make sure that you have no collision preset for this element you don't need it to cast shadows too. And that's all for the setup of map capture. Now let's take a look at BP map. So BP map. Minimap size integer. Default value 256. Big map size integer value 
124. It's the capture size for our scene capture components for the minimap and world map. Render target minimap. It's texture render target 2D for the minimap and the same for the big map or the world map. Tracking timer. It's time handler and minimum multiplier. So we can have different representations for mean and world map in their scopes or their zoom states. As for scene capture component, minus 90, autographic. Show only list. Also make sure. Let me check. Yes. And for map capture too, that capture source is final color. So for minimap final color, capture refrain and all movement are actually switched off. Make sure that on the game is selected. The same for big map component. It's actually scene capture component 2D also. Minus 90 degrees on the Y axis, autographic. Show on the list, final color. Capture behavior. On the game selected. Now let's talk about functions. Start tracking. No inputs or outputs. Destroy map. The same. Remember that you need to create it by yourself. Update. Map status, the inputs boolean for minimap, update map object, show component and type primitive component. Now let's move to EP underscore command marker. Here we have the static mesh, it's market plane. Also the same plane from basic shapes of engine content. Rotation on Z axis is 90. No collision and no cast shadows. We'll apply the material with the texture of our icon on it. Now, for our variables, material instance dynamic common marker, here, no default value, we set it through our logic, it's the material for this type of, the reference for this type of material. Now, market data, instance editable, default value is db command marker, it's the database we created earlier, this one, and the row name by default is none, so when we add our command marker on our scene, Here, or here, or here, as you can see, you can 
set the proper type yourself and there will be different results. Next, market structure. It's type common market structure. This one. Next, Boolean type update. This is editable. So, basically, when you change something that has the logic in the construction script, you need to reset the transform, for instance, or do something, so it will be updated, and when you start the game, it will also be updated. But when you do some updates through our database here, when you don't update the logic in the construction script, it just won't show you, it won't, has no, it won't have any impact in your game. So, we will create this kind of logic. So, when we do something in our database here, we select the proper marker. This, 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 we all judge them all. And press update. Then the values from our database will re trigger the construction script logic, and when we launch the game, they will be applied. So make attention that that's very important. Now, minimum size in units, plot, update rotation timer, time handler, b minimap boolean, default value is false, and check player timer. So basically, because our markers are placed in the world, they are created earlier than our player character and they need to trigger the function through it, but with no proper reference, the, their logic won't work, so we need to actually set timer by the event time of set timer by event kind of logic. So we check whether we have the proper player character and whether it's true we need to clear it and then proceed with our logic. So for this we need this kind of timer. And update or I'm sorry not update unpack data and proceed. It's the function with no inputs or outputs. Now Let's talk about player character interface. Because we have some logic here too. So, player character interface. Configure map. Function create map widget. Input. RT big map. It's texture render target to lead. The same, but for minimap. Another one, it's update map widget. Minimap, boolean. I forgot this. Next, destroy map widget. No inputs or outputs. Then, Create map market widget, market data, location, minimap size in units, data, data table row handle, vector, plot, update player map, show component and primitive component type of variable, and Get minimap data, no inputs, but 
We have outputs. Minimap size in units, it's float type, and B minimap is boolean. Also, as you can see, I have created create hard interface function and destroy hard. So basically, if you take a look at how player character looks like right now, in previous tutorials, the event begin play had much more nodes here and much more nodes on the event destroyed here but I have created another graph we can create it so I call it widget management and event create hard it's the call from the interface so event destroy hard is also the call from the interface and by triggering them, I just create all type of my widgets here or destroy all of my type, all of my widgets here. I need this. So for some purposes, for instance, if we have the photo sh photo shooting mode, we need to destroy all our HUD, unnecessary HUD. So I can just use those events for these quick actions. Now, as we are in our play character, let's actually take a look what has changed. We need to add player marker, it's static mesh component, it's the plane. Rotation is 90 degrees on that axis, so it will handle the texture for our player icon. Setup is the same, no collision and no cast shadow. Now, for the variables, we have BP map type is the reference for our blueprint map here B minimap boolean default value is true it's for the initialization of the logic so we can actually have less interface calls and so on just because when we start our game the minimap will always be on top so, the default value is true. Next, material instance dynamic player marker. Default value none. Next, marker data. Data table row handle. Default values db common marker. And row name player. And marker structure. F common marker struct. So actually, that's all for all this. I'm sorry, not all. We have some functions. The function create map is internal function and prepare marker player player marker. Also, no inputs or outputs. Now, let's see what we have in player controller. Save. Just wait a second. I need to find where I 
have put oh so in case you want to do the same with the widget layout on the event begin play you need to make the interface call for the create hat and it will trigger make sure that it's the interface function call not message because we as we have this implementation here in our play character we can use it directly the implementation we have in our entity so it we'll trigger only well 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 this kind of logic and on the event destroyed you need to make also the first call function destroy hard so it will trigger this part of logic it will destroy all the widgets so back to player controller we have this kind of changes so now let's talk about the logic the implementation of logic we are done with our basic setup oh actually actually i forgot i have created the function library as you can see my hierarchy here i have function library folder here it's blueprint as you can see it's function library type to create this you can just press right mouse button then go to well blueprints and select blueprint function library so you can use the custom functions you create in any blueprint and here I have created two types of functions the first one is get play character it's actually so we need this and it's pure so every time we need to cast to our play character to see whether it's valid or it's actually our play character we need to get play character cast to blah 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 now we just need to use get play character as you can see it's new category core and that's all this will always return the play character bp play character actually your controlled pawn and another function also make sure that play character is set as a reference to the return value of this function it's a getter the same for get map, map capture size we need this so our world map and mini map our scene captures for this type of entities will know which autographic width to use so it will capture the proper amounts of entities placed in the world it's the size of the capture and here I use get all actors of class and BP map capture as the reference and for each our level it's only one actor used in our level you don't need any so it will always return if we have it it will always be the 
first element in the array. So from here, I just drag and drop. <laughs> not drag and drop. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired. We just need to pull a wire and get world size in units and world size in kilometers and use it for the return value here. As you remember, we have created this kind of variables here. Now, let's go back to the implementation of the logic, the blueprint work. So, player controller. Event create map widget. Create hot map widget. Provide the references. Set hot map reference, name is GUI map, and add it to viewport. That order is 1000. So it will be on the top of any element. When destroy map widget, whether it's valid, we need to remove it from parent and set our map widget to null reference. Event update map widget. We need to check whether our map is valid. If it's so, and it will always be true, because when our player character is spawned, it spawns our map, and we have some timers that actually checks whether our player character is spawned. So this will trigger. And from GUI map, we use update map function and set minimap value here. Remember, it's the function we created here. You just don't see this, you just don't implement this kind of logic, but make sure that you have created all these functions earlier. Next, event create map marker widget. Whether our map is valid, we need to use create map marker function and provide these values to it. This type of event creates the minimap elements we display on the edge of minimap. And we need to provide making data, location and sizing units to have the proper layout for these elements on our edge. The making data we will unpack and set texture, texture size and the offset, not on the offset, offset will set in other place. The location to check whether it's on our screen direct view on the minimap and the map size in units to have the proper condition for measuring the distance. So take a closer look so we can close our player controller and continue with other Blueprints. Now let's talk about my play character. First of all, let's open our project settings. And our input, let's create the show map binding. I set it to tab. So when I press tab, the world map will show, the minimap will hide. When I stop pressing show map, 
binding tab key, the logic will be opposite. The minimap will be shown and the world map will hide. Next, on this input, when I press my key, I set the minimap value to false and use update map widget. It's the message through our interface that we have seen earlier. Then it will actually update map status of our map. It's also the function we call from our BP map. And when we release the key, we need to switch the value for our minimap to true and also update our map widget and our map status. Next, when update player map, whether our map, it's BP map, is valid, we need to update map objects. Actually, this function will be triggered by our markers and the primitive component marker plane of our common marker will be added to the show on the list of the scene capture component of our map. for our mini and wall map scene capture component. Here this function. Now let's open create map function. Here as you can see I spawn an actor Class is BP map, this class, and the default owner is hidden, so you need to expose or expand the blueprint. And let's set player character as the owner of our map. And, as you can see, I have the local variable, it's default transform, actually it has zero, everything, but one in scale. We don't need to attach it directly, because the behavior for the world and minimap will be different. So we will be changing the transform during our gameplay on the timer event. So here we just need to create our map and to trigger it. Let's see our event graph. On the event begin play, make sure to have the proper way to call for each function. So basically the first we need to call for create map event. After this, as you can see, we have prepare player marker event not event but function. So create map, prepare player marker. Next update player map it's the interface call. So our player marker will actually be added to the scene capture component of our map. Next, create HUD. Or if you don't have this, 
implementation. You just need to call create map widget. It's the message to our player controller where we have map. Then we pull away and search for Render target texture to d for our world and mini map and provide them as a reference to update our widget. So, one more time. If you don't have create hard, right after update player map, you just need to use this kind of logic. And next, the flow you have in your game. Now, let's take a look at prepare player marker function. So, as you know, we have created data table row handler with the proper default values. Now we need to unpack it, store it to our marker structure, then create material instance dynamic for our plane as the source is common marker. This one Next, set the return value as the local cached version. Next, from our structure, we need to have the texture and use the element to set texture parameter value from our newly created material instance dynamic with parameter name of texture. So, our arrow representing the icon of arrow that represents our character will be applied on our plane. Next, as you can see, I had set relative scale 3D on my player marker and I use the dimensions I have in my, from my structure. Basically, it's size but it's vector 2D, so To have this kind of representation, you just need to press the right mouse button and use split struct pin. That's it. Z value is always 1, so be careful to not set it to 0. And set relative location to player marker to the value we have in our database or from our structure. As it's relative, make sure that x and y axis are set to zero. We only need to change our z axis. Now, we also have some functions from our interface. Let's see what implementation we have here in our player character. Map. Get minimap data. We check whether our map, bpmap, 
is valid. If it's so, we need to return the minimap status. Also, from our map, we need to find minimap component. It's scene capture component for the our, for our minimap, and we need to extract auto width. It's the size of capturing. How much distance we can capture and use it as minimap size in units. So basically, when we start developing the logic for our map, you'll see why we use auto width of our scene capture. And let me see one more time. Update, update, update. Here we have all repair create map here, repair player marker here, and get minimum updates here. And on the event begin play, the proper flow, create map, prepare player marker, update player marker, create hard. So let's move on. Now let's talk about DP map. So let's start with start tracking function. We use get owner. As you remember, earlier we have assigned player character as, as, as the owner of our map. Then, we need to set actor location and rotation, and it's a very specific behavior. So, start tracking means that we use our minimap. For our minimap, we need to adjust x and y location that we inherit from our owner. But we need to actually not change that axis of our map. So when we jump or fall or something, there will no be, there will be no difference in capturing. And for the rotation, we use that value. So we have the proper alignment the proper direction so our player character marker will be static and the world or actually the representation of our world's minimap will rotate so change this as you can see on your screen now destroy map actually when play character dies on the event destruct one moment here we also fire the function destroy map through our BP map reference and everything is due is just destroying our map. Next, update map status. This function 
files when we press our tab key. By pressing our tab key, we actually set the minimap status and depending on the value we have, if it's our minimap, we need to set timer by event. As event we call start tracking, it's our function, this one. So we actually start updating the rotation and location of our minimap. It's set to update every 0 0.04 seconds. It's looping. Also, I have created the timer. So when I stop pressing my key, I need to clear it. So this logic won't trigger. And here is the tricky part. We need to set capture every frame on our minimap component, scene component for minimap, and uncheck capture every frame on big map component. So only one random target will be used. If minimap is false, it means it's our world map. We actually need to set the extra location and rotation to world origin location. Here. And get actor location. It's the location of our map as Z axis. So it will it won't change any anyhow. For the rotation, everything set to zero. So our map will always be rotated in a proper way when we use our world map. After this, we clear and invalidate timer which we created earlier in this part of logic. And here we switch capture every frame logic. For minimap we turn off, for world map we turn on. Now um, pum, 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 pum. let's go to update map objects function. We use this function from our play character, from our common marker. So when play character spawns and also common marker are spawns, they trigger this function and provide their meshes, their plane meshes as the reference to add to our show only list for both of our scene capture components. So you can go like this, but when we use function we can actually have the direct call from the component we have here. Even if we don't have it in our variables, like this. So provide show component as a reference in component to our minimap and world map scene captures. Now, let's see the event graph. On the event begin play, we create the render target. Make sure that format is RGBA8. We don't need the higher one. Minimap size provided because we create 
the first one is our minimap. Then we provide the return value as parent target minimum minimap local reference and set this value as texture target for our scene caption. Now from the blueprint function library we use get map capture size. As you remember, it's the function that actually gets the value we have from our map capture tool that we set here in our level. It uses this value. But we need it in unit. Then we use minimap multiplier and set the auto width of our minimap scene capture component. So our minimap is zoomed in. Next we do the same, but for our wall map. Make sure GBA 8 is set as the format. The same kind of logic. But here we don't use any minimap multiplier because we need to show the whole map at once. And right after this, we need to update map status. As you can see, minimap set to true by default because when we start our game, minimap will be shown. So we need to update it as the initialize, initialization part of logic at the begin play. So we can actually start this kind of logic. And event destroyed. On the event destroyed we need to clear our render target with the black color. Also, we need to clear and validate our tracking timer. And that's all for our map. Now let's move to map capture. Now in map capture Let's actually open map capture function. The flow is the same as it was for our map, for our scene capture components here. We create the render target. Capture size is 1K. And if it's enough, if you like to go with the result you capture in game. But if you want to draw over the results you have for instance, in Photoshop, you need to use higher values, for instance, 4 or 8K. Then, in Photoshop, draw over the elements and use the style you like. And then, go back to our level, provide the texture and play. So, next, we set auto width of our scene capture with world size in units. So the higher the value is, the more area actually our scene capture can cover. Next is the tricky part. We use get all actors with tag, and tag is capture. So basically, all our elements on scene has no tag. If you want to have something to be captured, you need to provide the proper tag, so when you, for instance, if you take a look at our cubes here, they all have tag capture, the same for the landscape. So if you want something to not be shown on your map, like in movies when something is shown on the map, but it was at some past time and in present 
something changed. You can go with this kind of variation. So you need to just clear the tag. Then when you capture the element with no tag, won't be shown on your shot. Actually, I don't know what the way is better to have tags for the elements that you need to capture or if you need a tag to actually capture all instead of these elements that have tags. So play around with this. For myself, I found useful using tags for adding elements to be shown. So, then we get the array of these actors and set them as show only actors. And because these kinds of objects are actually static mesh actors, only their geometry will be captured. Then we use capture scene. It's like a shot on your photograph. It means that it captures one frame. Next, we check whether our texture name that we provide here is empty. Whether it's empty, we don't do anything. Uh, actually, not, not, not empty, I'm sorry, not equals. If our texture has something, we export render target, which we have captured. This one. To the proper directory. I use get project content directory, then append string and use this hierarchy. As you can see, I have maps and map capture. So every time I shoot, I press shoot or capture. In my maps, if it's the first element, there will be created map capture folder and here there will be saved the texture that I just shot. It's very useful because when it's set to the direct directory of your content, there will be the option. Let me show. For instance, I'd like to have the texture name sandbox2. Then I use capture and the message will appear to actually input what I have just added. So the flow is very very quick and very simple. And as you can see, it has the proper name. And if you open your dir the directory of your project, you can see that you actually have the PNG files of your shots. And you can adjust the texture and then, for instance, let's color it with some color. Then we can use it as the reference for our capture here. Now when we launch our game, we can see that we actually use this texture. So that's so simple. <clears throat> now let's continue.
end. For the file pass, go with the one you need. And for the format of the texture name, I use T underscore for texture and PNG for the proper format of the export file. And right after this, I use set capture to false. So the option here will always have false. When I press and change the value to true, it will capture. Then go back to the default state to false, so I can capture it every time I need. Semi-automatic way. Now, let's go to the construction script of our map capture. I need to set the actual location of my map capture to the center of our world. For this I use get world origin location and divide it by 2. And for that location I use 0. So every time I actually add element of map capture to my scene, it will always be the center. I'm sorry, this, the way it looks here is actually the yellow one, it's the projection of the plane I have here, but the actor, the actually, let me show you here, scene capture, not scene capture, Oh my god. Yes, default scene root will always be at the center. So if I even try to put it somewhere, oh, it's the loop. If I try to put the actor somewhere, you can see it not allow me. So it's the best way to have. The, this control. Now, I use world size in kilometers. It's the value I have here. And I multiply it by 1000. 100,000 to have the value in units. So it just for the purpose of comfort. It's actually less confusing to set the value to 20 hundred thousand or 2,000. You just need to use if our map is 500 meters, use 0 0.5, it's 1 kilometer, 1 kilometer, 2 kilometer, and so on. So, you see the idea. Also, make sure that when you set the proper value here, you don't need it to change, because if your map is 500 units, There will be. I'm sorry, I have no texture. One moment, guys. Uh, maps. Well, if it's set to proper, the correct value. It will work correctly, but when you set it, for instance, one kilometer, but your 
map is 500, 500 meters. You can see it's improper behavior. So when you approach to the building, for instance, you can see that you actually are away on your map. The same behavior if it you go with the lower value. So make sure that the values are always the same. So if you have one kilometer map, so wall size in kilometers for the map capture is set also to one kilometer. So you won't have these problems. Now, let's go back to map capture and continue. We need to set relative location for our camera. Camera is added just in case you can see the result that you are capturing. It's for the representation purpose. Because it's centered, we need to leave X and Y locations to zero. Also, we use world size in units here. Next, for the projection plane, we need to divide world size in units by 100 because we use the basic shape plane here and its size by default is 100 by 100. So when we do this, the relative scale actually will be in units. So the let me show you. Right now it's five hundred by five hundred meters. If I set it to one kilometer the size changes. Two kilometers, size changes. So it's perfectly aligned. So if I have, for instance, 0 0.1, it means only 100 meters, 100 meters. So make sure that you have the proper division element in B field here. The value here should be the same as the actual size of your plane that you are projection on. Then we have a branch where the, the capture is set to true. We need to map capture, actually to make our shot, trigger this kind of logic. And for the event, event graph, on the event begin play, we need to create the dynamic material instance for our projection plane. Then we need to set texture parameter value we have from our map texture that we provide from our scene here as the value map projection material, make sure that parameter name is set to proper one, the texture. As you remember, it's this material. Then we set timer by event every 0 0.2 second and it's called check play and proceed. Because map capture and also goes for the common marker. You can see that we have the same kind of logic here. They are actually set on our map before our player is spawned. They can trigger the logic while our character is not valid. So to prevent this, we need to actually check whether our player character 
is valid. If it's so, we clear our timer and then proceed with the logic. Make sure that you can that you use this function from our function library. It's called get play character. Actually, you don't if you don't use it, you can just go with this kind of logic. And it will also work. So, when our validation is complete, we need to update player map. So, update player map, it means that we provide our plane to our map, so it can be added to show only list. And that's all for the map capture. Now let's talk about common marker. Let's begin with unpack data and proceed. Here, as you can see, we are unpacking the data table common marker so that the result of our unpacking as the local version of marker structure. Then we set actor location. To the zero on the, that axis. So every time we put our common mark in our map, it will be aligned on this way. But it depends, it really depends on the behavior you would like. For me, it's okay. But if you have the different terrain, you can skip this step. Also, I use set relative location on my market plane from the value I have defined in my database. And we only need to change that axis. Our markers are static, so x and y can be left with zero values. We also change the size of our plane with the values we have in our database. So it will be pixel perfect on our, not, or even unit perfect on our mini map or our world map. Also, the, also make sure that market plane has no collision and it's not casting any shadows. Now, to the construction script. The logic is simple. When we place something, I mean our marker on our level, need to trigger and pack data. But we also have the custom update event because when, as I said earlier, when we change something from our database, when we press play, and the logic is for unpacking and setting is in our instruction script, the dates won't have any impact. For this, we can actually go with event begin play solution, but sometimes this is not necessary. It's up to you to decide where to put this kind of logic. You can skip this variation and just use unpacked data from unpack data and proceed 
right before the event begin play here. But in my case, I like to have the full control over every my action. So when I change something in the database, then I select the value, the items that I changed, and just press update. And when I launch my game, the updates will be there. Let me demonstrate. As you can see here, we have right now for our viewpoint small icons. Now let's change the value for instance type A to something bigger 50 by 50. If you press play, as you can see, nothing happens. That's because the construction script has not run yet. So for this, I need to press update on the marker with the type A row here. And now, when I press play, we can see that the results actually changed. But let's take a look on this kind of situation. If you don't have, if you don't like to have the full control over your actions, we skip this step and we just copy paste in pack data and proceed right before the event begin play here. Now, when we change here to small value, for instance, by 10, as you can see, the updates are actually held right away. Now let's change it to 100 by, by 100 and everything works fine. So it's your decision. Let's set our values to normal size and continue and continue. So on the event begin play, yes, on the event begin play, we create the material instance dynamic for our market play. Then we set texture from our database to the command marker material instance dynamic with the parameter name texture so the icon will be applied on it then we use this kind of logic to check whether our player character is valid this kind of logic here I use the same function library function. So whether the result of casting is valid, I clear the timer so it won't tick and then I update player map, provide market plane as the show component. So we tell our character to update the map to add this element to this to its show list is the interface message. Then I use get minimap data is the function that we created in our player character. Actually, the, it's the interface getter, but the implementation we have in our player character this one
So I use minimap size in units to set it to local cached version and then I send the message to create the edge representation icons for my minimap and provide market data, actual extra location and the size we have in units from the get minimum data so our widget can calculate the proper behavior. Right after this, I use another timer with the function is called update rotation. And update rotation is actually the custom event, which actually triggers every 0.4 seconds check whether our minimum status is true. Here I just go with this layout in case these kind of nodes are put on the bottom side of my blueprint. So if it's not minimap, so it means our big map, we need to set relative rotation for our marker plane to 9 90 degrees on that axis, so it's aligned on the direct on the proper direction as the default state. Whether it's not, it means our minimap we need to set relative rotation with this behavior. On that axis, we need to provide the actor location of our player character and add 90 degrees like this, so the direction will always be the same as the our player character forward vector and that's all for the common marker now let's take a look at our widgets and we actually are done so let's start with HUD map widget, this one. On the event reconstruct, I use sequence to create the dynamic material instance for both of my elements. For world map, image element and minimap image element. Then I use set brush from material to set the material instance dynamic so my elements are actually now have the proper visual style also I forgot that minimap has that order 0 and minimap has that order 1 And then I set texture parameter value with the name of texture for both of my materials and provide the references that I have at the moment that my widget was added or was created. Right after player spawned and map has been spawned to the values. RT minimap and RT big map. It's actually texture render target 2D. So when we start our game, the textures that came from our map will be applied here. And as you remember, from the flow we have in our layer character. First is map created, or well, actually, on the event begin play, our play chart is formed, then we create the map, then we create the markers. After this, we update our player map, and right after this, we create our HUD. So, these references here will be valid 
Now let's take a look at the update map function. This function triggers when the tab key is pressed. When the minimap is actually true, we need to hide our big map and show our minimap. Then we are iterating through map marker list. It's the array of map marker widgets. This one. The element that should be on the edge of our minimap. And when minimap is shown, we need to set the visibility for these elements to visible and update map status to minimap. So actually, the logic provided in this widget will trigger. The same but opposite when we have minimap false, it means the world map. So we need to show world map, hide minimap, then hide and update minimap status for all, for all of our map marker list objects. Now let's take a look at create map marker. Its function that actually is fired from the common marker this one So we create map marker widget, this widget, and provide the data which we accumulate from our common marker here. Its location, size in units, and marker data. Then we add each element to the array and add every child to the viewport. As you see, that order is set to one. 1000 and 100 units. That's because we need to have in order we need in order we have our elements on the edge, right on the edge, not above or below. That order needs to be higher than that order of the main element here. And as you remember, when we created, let me show you our element, our map widget through our player controller. That order was 1000. So, in case the edge elements need to be updated right on the edge, not below our main element here, we need to set this value to something higher. But in case we need your elements to be higher than our minimap, not on the edge but above. You can go with any that order you want. And event destruct. Here we need to clear every child widget we created. I mean every map marker widget. So we are iterating through our list. If the widget is valid, we remove it from parent and on the complete we clear our array. So that's it. Now let's take a look at map marker widget. As 
as you can see from the preview right now the element is top aligned but here we will actually put it right on the center and it will be size dependable so whether it will be small or bigger it will always be aligned right in the center of the edge so let's start with the event graph we are unpacking our marker data then for our image this one we set brush from texture from the database we have then we set brush size we need to multiply it by 2 so our element will be the same size as it is on our MIDI or world map and we set padding but for top as you can see here padding is set to zero for all elements so it's aligned perfectly right here with no offsets so from marker structure as our icon is equal on both dimensions so we can use size x we multiply it by minus one so it will be flipped right here and we use make margin actually we can use set padding for our grid grid is our body that actually stores this child and just pull a wire from embedding and use make margin like I did here and you can hide the unnecessary one you need that you don't need and I use update map status function with the minimap checked it's the initialization kind of logic because our minimap will show will be shown when our game starts now let's take a look at each function closely let's begin with update map status as you remember we have minimap boolean type with the rep notify so basically this function just changes this value every time it's fired and now let's take a look at on rep minimap function whether our minimap is changed we trigger whether it's true the event that fires on the timer each 0.4 second 0.04 second it's looping the function is called update rotation it's this one so basically when we have our minimap our grid here will be rotating so goes for our marker element here but we need it static so it will it should always be the same direction as our player marker we need another kind of logic and when the minimap is false it means that we need to clear our ticket logic here and just show our 
world map. So let's take a look closely. And let's go to update rotation logic. Here for the grid I use get rendered angle get rendered transform angle and multiply it by minus one and set render transform angle for my marker. So as I said, my grid is rotating in some direction, but when we rotate it, the relative transform of this icon actually is the same. So rotating the whole element will rotate this element too. To prevent this, we need to get the opposite rotation of our parent, our grid, and provide it as the angle for our icon element. So when we rotate it, for instance, on the left, our parent is rotating on the left, our child will rotate on the right. So computing opposite values will result as zero, so the element will be static. Now it's update rotation, we have update position and update visibility. Let's go with update visibility. This logic is for triggering whether the element should appear on the edge or should be hidden. We use get player controller, then view target and get actual actor location. So Right after this, as you can see, I have location. It's actually the reference we have from our common marker. To have this representation, we just need to split structure pin. And we need to subtract from the view target location. It's our actor the location of the common marker we have on X and Y axis. Then we have the vector and we need to get the length of this vector. Then we use get map capture size, the function from our function library, this one, and divide the length of the vector on this side by kilometers and check whether this value is higher than the minimap size in units. So whether this is true, it means that our marker, this icon, should be visible. So the actual size, the actual distance covered, the actual area covered with our minimap is not covering our element, our common marker right now. So for this, we need to put the our marker on our edge. Whether our capture size is less than minimap size in units, so our common mark is on our minimap fully visible, it means that we need to hide this element from the edge, just like this. So take a closer look one more time.
and this was this was this was status event graph we have one more function left it's called update position we need to compute find look at the rotation but at local rotation so we can use this kind of logic for the behavior when we actually are changing the direction of our player for instance we are looking on the right and then we change our direction on the left the elements on the edge should go on the right side so you will always know at which direction you need to approach to get to the location you need for this i use find look at rotation the same kind of logic as it was in the update visibility here so we use get view target get actor location then it goes to start and for the target is the location of our marker so we can have the proper rotation then we use play controller and get actor transform it's actually our player character and use inverse transform rotation on the z-axis so the rotation actually the direction of the element which is going to rotate will be flipped so we can have the proper behavior and let me show you how to capture this scene one more time and we are actually done so to have the whole system work let's actually delete elements we have here let's clear the tags for capturing also for our landscape and let's delete our map capture so basically we have just our scene and if we press play we can see that we have nothing here no markers no actually world or minimap and we have some troubles that's because we don't have the map capture actor on our scene so to have the feature to work in the proper way you need to have it for this let's add map capture to our scene then let's see the size of the landscape we have it's 500 by 500 select map capture and select the proper world size in kilometers 0 0.5 now let's also delete map capture folder oh i can't do this because right now i have the reference in memory but okay let's go with this and as you can see if you don't have any texture name nothing happens but let's set name for instance test and change capture resolution to 2K. Now when we press capture, 
you see that we have actually imported the full blank image. There is nothing here. That's because we don't have any elements added to our show only list. For this, let's for instance get some cubes. This one, this one, this one. And maybe this one, this one, and this one. Three on the left at the beginning and three on the right at the end. And for text, also make sure that you are providing text for the actor, not for the component text. Set it to capture. Now, let's also add landscape to our show only list. When it's done, select map capture and press capture one more time. But we can use our texture here as the reference for map text here and press capture right now. So it will be automatically updated. And if you open our image, you can see right now we have landscape and our elements that we added to our capture. And when we press play, we can see that minimap and world map are now have the proper visual feedback. Now let's add some markers. Let's go with top view and provide markers. for three buildings on our left. The first one will be type A, the second one will be type B, and the third one will be type C. Now, when we press play, you can see that actually, right now, we have our markers displayed. And they are actually rotating in the proper way. The behavior is as it intended to be. So that's all for this tutorial. I hope I don't forgot anything, but if there will be some questions, please Ask me and I'll help you with the implementation. So, subscribe if you like this video, leave your feedback and see you soon!